Oh, by the way, I got the map fish accidentally here, but I'm gonna show off the little minigame you can play with this guy. Is shoot him! Because that's what we've always wanted to do. Shoot the map fish when he comes out of the water. I think this is supposed to help with his back pain or something. Let's see how many times I could- I, I never play this game, I have no idea how to do this. But we'll give it a shot. Ah, doing well so far. I can't even see where the fish is. Yeah, probably picked the worst time of night and weather to do this. But yeah, map fish minigame. Shoot him. You can't even see him. Oh jeez, man. I picked Stormy and Dark. This is the worst time you could possibly do this minigame. I swear. And it feels so weird using the bow with the A button. But, yeah, you should be pretty used to using the bow and arrow by now. So this minigame shouldn't be that difficult if you can see, which I can't. But I'm sure you can because the, it's easier to see on a computer than it is on a television. Where's that guy? Yeah, one more arrow. And then we'll be done with the minigame. And I think this nets us some rupees. Where are you? How'd you get over there? So let's see, how much money do we get for this? What's the deal? It can only hit me five times. Oh well, what's a man fish to do? Here's your 50 rupees. That ain't so bad. Okay, now on to the next island for sure. The next island to the west is Headstone Island, home of the Earth Temple. But if we head a little bit further north of the Earth Temple, specifically in this area here, it looks like the northwest, we'll arrive at another submarine. What awaits us inside this submarine? Well, I don't know either. Let's find out. Hey, we dropped straight down here, and holy crap, there are a lot of, uh, rats. Easiest to deal with you with Boomerang, I think. Of course, you gotta watch out for all the bombs, because there are plenty of bombs here. I don't know if these guys... No, the Boomerang doesn't kill them, does it? It actually does. That's helpful. Just keep moving around here so the bombs don't hit you. These guys can be very annoying. And it looks like a flame spouted up behind where we would escape the ladder that we would use to get out of the submarine. And that's a red rupee, isn't it? You didn't steal from me, did you, mice? Stupid mice. I never show this off. You could sprinkle bait in front of the hole where they live, and they will sell you things, albeit for much more than they're actually worth. But you can get money from those guys. I mean, items and things, like bait. It's not worth it, though. I promise it's not. So, that activates three things. The ladder here is no longer on fire. There is now a ladder here, and there's a treasure chest inside the room up here. Why that had to- why killing mice had to activate three things is a little bit of overkill in my opinion, but... It's also ironic, I guess. And we pick up a treasure chart for our troubles. Once again, good for us. What's in these pots? Money. Yeah, we're about halfway maxed out with our rupee count, but we're going to be draining that pretty quickly because once I'm confident that I have a nice amount of money to hold myself over, I'll go pick up the spare things from Rock Spire Isle. But not yet. We'll just continue on to the next square. After passing our home island of Outset, we arrive at the most southwest square on the map, Horseshoe Island. On the island due east of here lives an old man who was once a master swordsman, and he knows the hurricane spin. It's a good thing we picked that up before we went to the Earth Temple, because that made the boss a breeze. So up here is a pretty interesting island, because we will find all of these nuts, and... Well, what are we supposed to do here? Here we gotta do a little bit of golfing. We have to get these nuts into those holes and avoid the pea hats or sea hats. I think they're called sea hats. Let me deal with you while you're there. Ah, just before he was out of my reach. So yeah, when you get to this point, things start to get a little tricky. 
if you can't quite get the nut there, you can use your Deku Leaf to blow it in. And usually it'll lead itself in there, you don't have to be super precise with the Deku Leaf to get that to work. Especially over here when that's all you have to get this thing moving here, so... Deku Leaf it. And if it falls off, it's okay because it will eventually respawn. It won't take forever to do so either. So, just sink that baby in there. And we spawn a treasure chest up there. Not only that, but I also spot the telescope dude. Ho ho! So beautiful! Incredibly beautiful! I'm so glad I brought this kaleidoscope. I bet you are too. Those things are really cool to look at. So once we get here, change... Actually, we'll do that last so I don't have to change the direction of the wind again. Go inside this hole here. And we'll find a bunch of moths that we can set on fire. Because that's the humane thing to do. And just so I don't have to deal with magic... Take you out with regular arrows if I can. Regular arrows would be much better for you. So yeah, one shot all of those guys. The bow and arrow makes those things so easy to deal with, it's not funny. Beat up the moths. And we will find a treasure chest. An important looking treasure chest. And guess what this is? It's yet another treasure chart. We're going to be picking up a lot of these things in case you guys couldn't tell because there's one for every island on the Great Sea. Could have really used some magic. I forgot those things have golden feathers. Oh well, let's make our way back out of the hole and pick up the other treasure chest we spawned on this island. Let's see, what direction is the wind blowing? Wind? I don't see anyone. It's blowing in the wrong direction. So let's change the direction so we can get to the other island. And hop on over. And inside this treasure chest, I bet you guys won't believe it. It is yet another treasure chart. Boy, oh boy, am I going to have fun opening up each and every one of these. But I'll meet you guys on the next island. Just to the northwest of our home island of Outset is Diamond Step Island. Oh, I've got some great information, Small Fry. Lucky you. If you use that treasure that's hidden on the island there, the thing that vanishes as soon as you get near it, it won't vanish anymore. You know, it, the ghost ship. I'm talking about it. That thing appears here on nights when a wee bit of the right half of the moon is missing. Do you know what I'm talking about? It. So we can finally deal with it! And holy crap do we have good timing because that's the ghost ship in the background right there! And on top of that, we have a treasure chart treasure to dig up. So if we do everything right, we can deal with all of the ghost ship stuff on this island right now! But first, pick up another piece of heart because it's just cool. Now, I want to get the ghost ship while it's here and not have to track it down later. So let's do everything we can on this island as soon as freaking possible. So get as close to this thing as we can. Use the hook shot to get up to this island. And it's a pretty neat little island, actually. So hop on the stump, look for yet another tree. We're going to be doing a bit of island hopping like this because that's what the hook shot is really good at. And Link can't adjust the... Whoa, that's a weird camera. So, we'll make our way up here. And we will find... A pretty interesting... Little puzzle inside the hole at the top of the island here. A pretty unique puzzle. And a pretty scary one at that. If we're in here... Are a bunch of these warp pots... And you have to figure out which ones you need to go in. Luckily, I think I remember where I'm supposed to go. Of course, knowing me, I mean, I might have them all wrong, and I, we might be here for three years and three days. But hopefully I'm not wrong. 
So we'll take the pot just in front of us when we hop out of the first one. That is correct. Holy crap. Those things. Uh... Let's not deal with the Floor Masters. That's fine, I'll deal with that. This may not be the right pot, but I'd much prefer not to deal with the Floor Masters. Will I have to? Yes, I will. Oh boy. Okay, let's try this again. Every time you go in the wrong pot, you will be warped back to the beginning, but you won't have to redo all the work that you did. See, the pot here is still open, so I don't have to reopen it. And we're gonna have to deal with the Floor Masters. Oh boy. So let's try opening this one up, and I'll leave the other one closed so I know which one I tried. Although I am pretty sure this is the correct one. So head in this pot that was also directly in front of us, we'll wind up on a ship here. And we want to cross the ship and avoid the Floor Master. So open that pot up, the one that was diagonal from the one we came out of. Jump inside it. And we will wind up... ...with another Floor Master, so you gotta make sure he doesn't grab you, because that's a really nasty place to drop you outside that pot, reading right after you pop out as a Floor Master. But, for your troubles, you get the Ghost Ship chart, and now we know exactly what islands and when that ghost ship is going to appear. And lucky for us, it's this island on this night. I swear, I did not time that in the least bit, and I am just as impressed as you are that it worked out that way. So, without further ado, let's make our way over to that ghost ship. And that thing is scary as hell. Where is it? Actually, I gotta find my own ship first. But, that's the ghost ship over there, and if we can get a good look with our telescope... That's the ghost ship, alright. Blue flames and everything. So where is my boat? The boot! Okay, seriously, where is my boat? Because I'll be really upset if it's not at the foot of the island where I left it. There it is. Okay. Let's re-equip the sail. I was hoping I could jump right into you, Coral. Good to see you again. Let's go ghost ship hunting, shall we? Because this is totally the thing that we should be doing, sailing right into the ship. Before we had the ghost ship chart, we couldn't do this because the boat would just go away. But, as you'll see when we approach the ghost ship... Scary noise. Scary noise indeed. And this is a really creepy place. Looks like the top of the submarine thing is missing. The top of the boat is missing. And you can see little faces up there too, like you could in the ghost galaxies of Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2. Very scary stuff. So, we see some sunlight in here, and I think that means we're going to have to deal with Pose. So let's get rid of these as soon as we can. I also heard a Wizrobe. Could have sworn I heard a Wizrobe. That was a summoning Wizrobe, wasn't it? Okay, what should we be doing? That sounds good. Free Dad! Oh my god, that was the last thing I wanted to say. Okay, you. Freeze you. I think we can break you in midair with this. Yes, we can. Isn't that terrific? Okay, so let's deal with the other Poe. Where is he? There you are. So, down you go. Is that really all there is to the ghost ship? I am not impressed. I thought you guys could do better than that, seriously. But, it's a ghost ship. What can you expect? They don't go out of their way to make their treasure accessible, and... That's a very scary face. Or is it? That's right, when you go into first-person view, the scary smile disappears. Also, when you first come in here, make sure you get all of the crap load of rupees that are actually waiting for you inside these pots, because once you open up that treasure chest, you will not be able to get back in here and pick up your spoils. So this is a really nice place to get some rupees. And I highly suggest that you remember to open those up before you get in here. And open the chest. 
It's in here we're going to find our second Triforce chart. If you guys forgot, we got the first one accidentally at the end of our last summer recording session. And once we pick that up, the ghost ship disappears, never to be seen again. And it's morning time now. Good for us. <laughs> 